The number of NAS devices in the market is growing and this taps into a broader trend for people to want more control and custody over their own data and often large volume cloud storage isn't actually as cheap as self storage anyway, especially if you do hoard a lot of data. So there's a lot of interest in NAS hard drives and especially between the two largest NAS drive manufacturers Seagate and Western Digital. Both of these companies make both consumer class and pro class NAS drives and broadly speaking they own most of the market. There is of course Toshiba with their N300 drives but I won't be including them today in my comparison. And if there is significant interest in the comments and I know there are certainly fans of Toshiba out there then I may tackle this in the future but for now let's focus on WD and Seagate. And honestly I'm still also a little salty if I'm honest about what I found from the Toshiba surveillance drives and I'm going to link the desktop versus surveillance video below if you want to check that out and find out what the dirt actually is. Now there's also the topic of using enterprise drives in place of NAS drives for home storage. And this is something I actually usually do, but again, that's another video. So today it's NAS on NAS. Let's find out how these NAS drives compare for performance, price, noise, and power consumption. Now again, I have a pile of drives here and I'll be doing some reviews of each of these lines of drives to compare how these drives do as you go up the range from two to up to 10 terabytes and beyond. So I'm gonna start with the four terabyte drive sizes for this reason, looking at the WD Red Plus, the WD Red Pro, the Seagate Ironwolf and then the Seagate Ironwolf Pro. This gives an excellent picture of what you can actually expect from the whole range and things really start to change for the most part once these drives get over eight terabytes where there, the consumer grade drives often go from 5400 RPM up to 7200 RPM. So lots of testing and content to come here. I have NAS drives up to 18 terabytes currently testing, and I'm gonna be doing some performance testing reviews on data center drives up to 26 terabytes coming also. I'm gonna link the tested drives below in the comments. These are affiliate links and they help support the channel and the testing I do without any cost to you. So please go check those out once you've finished and you've seen the outcomes of the testing. Now, looking at the specs of the drives today, we can see what the claims are around performance, with the WD Red Plus WD40 EFPX claiming a max throughput of 180 megabytes per second, the Seagate Ironwolf, and this is an ST4000 VN006 claiming 202 megabytes per second, the WD Red Pro, and this is the WD4005 FFPX claiming 267 megabytes per second, and then the Ironwolf Pro, ST4000 NT001, which comes with a claimed 250 megabytes per second. So I do also have an older ST4000NE001 Ironwolf Pro model here, which I'm gonna include in the testing, and this claims just 220 megabytes per second. But as we'll come to see, the reality actually doesn't really reflect this. All of these drives come with a 256 megabyte cache on board, with both the consumer drives using 5400 RPM spindle speed, and then the pro drives using 7200 RPM. There are other differences also, but to keep this brief, this is not around raw performance, but really around their design workload, rate limit, and warranty period. Noise and power also vary, as you might expect, and we're gonna be measuring the real world numbers as part of the testing. Though the Seagate and WD drives in many ways looks quite similar in terms of specification, there are certainly some clear differentiations here, and we're gonna be looking at those. Okay, so let's get straight to the performance testing and find out how they compare. Starting with the WD Red Plus, which has that claimed maximum speed of 180 megabytes per second. And I first wanna say, by the way, that this number on the spec sheet is fairly meaningless for anything other than directional indicator. Drive performance actually varies greatly depending on if it's a read or a write, if it's a large file or a small file, and also whereabouts on the drive plus you're gonna be actually interacting with. So if we look at the performance chart for the WD Red Plus, starting with the large file write performance, we see that after the initial use of write cache, we get around 190 megabytes per second sustained throughput. This throughput gradually drops off as the write moves from the outer to the inner tracks of the disk. And by the time it's 95% full, it's down to around 100 megabytes per second. However, it does maintain over 150 megabytes until around 70% capacity. And in this test, we're writing 10 gigabyte files sequentially until the disk reaches 99% full. And then we're measuring the time and the throughput doing this. Now the Iron Wolf drive from Seagate has similar, but I would say improved performance profile, starting around 200 megabytes per second, which is around the stated claim of 202 megabytes per second. Overall, 
the iron will outperform the red by between 5 and 10%, though in some parts of the test the performance is actually very close. Looking at the WD Red Pro, here we see a 25 to 30% performance improvement, and this is largely attributable to the higher rotational speed. However, we also see a more consistent performance profile. Write speed start at around 250 megabytes per second, and this is a little lower than the claim 267, but we wouldn't normally expect peak performance to occur during writes anyway. The performance curve means that the Pro Drive is outperforming its plus sibling across the entire test, with its performance at 60% capacity still better than the Red Plus's peak speeds. And then finally, we look at the Ironwolf Pro. And here we have the older NE001 model and the newer NT001 variant. And here the data sheets claim significant improvements in performance for the newer NT001 model of 250 megabytes per second, with the older drive trailing at 220. However, in reality, the two are close on performance, with the NE001 equaling the Red Pro for most of the tests, starting out at 250 megabytes per second. The NT001 does perform a little better, peaking out at around 5% faster than the NE001. Farm data on the drive suggests that they both have three platters, but that the newer drive is only running five heads rather than six, so the newer model does seem to have higher aerial density, which is probably what gives it its edge. Overall, the ST4000 NT001 Ironwolf Pro is the best performing of all the drives here, and in truth though, the two Ironwolf Pros and the Red Pros are all pretty close. Next we look at large file read performance, and again, starting with the Red Plus drive from WD, we see it starting out at dead on 200 megabytes per second at the disk edge, smoothly dropping as the heads read across the surface, ending at around 94 megabytes per second at 99% capacity. The iWolf consumer version has also very similar performance, though very slightly better. Similar to what we saw with the right test, so there isn't any real daylight between the WD and the Seagate offering here. And again, the Red Pro starts at around 258 megabytes per second, and although it keeps this up for around 15% of the capacity before slowly dropping towards 130 megabytes per second, it never quite makes the claim to 67 megabytes per second from the data sheet, but it is close. The two Ironwolf Pro variants again have very similar performance, both exceeding their claim max speed. The older NE001 model is, similar to the non-pro versions, pretty much inseparable from a performance perspective from its WD Red equivalent. The newer NT001 marginally beats them both, but it is very close, and again it's hard to see any real difference until the discs are half full, and then again the gap tightens at the end. So, a clear 25% improvement, stretching to 35% later in the test going from the WD Plus to the WD Pro, and a similar 25% uplift stretching to 40% going from the Ironwolf to the Ironwolf Pro in this particular test. So in the next test, we perform a mixed write test, and in this test, writing 10 gigabytes of data spread across 5,500 files of varying sizes from 16 kilobytes to 10 megabytes. And this is a more intensive from a metadata and file management perspective, and it represents a more realistic test scenario for normal file access. Starting again with the Red Plus, we see around 150 megabytes per second max throughput dropping to around 80 megabytes at the end of the test. The Ironwolf performs actually notably better here, starting out at about 160 megabytes and eventually converging with the Red at around 90% capacity. The Red Pro starts at 180 megabytes per second and that's a 20% improvement over the Red Plus. Raw rotational speed gives around a 25% advantage, but the cost of seeking and managing metadata adds a penalty that cannot be made up for by the faster spindle speed. By the end of the test, the Red Pro is writing at 105 megabytes per second, and that's a 30% advantage over the Red Plus and the Ironwolf. Now the Ironwolf Pro again here is the best performing, delivering around 195 megabytes per second for the NE001 and upwards of 200 megabytes per second for the NT001. And this is a good 10% improvement over the Red Pro, which is significant. So again, the Ironwolves appear to perform better than the Red Drives, and it's a similar story here again on the mixed file retest with the Ironwolf profile performing the Red Plus by about 5%, and then both the Ironwolf Pros again besting the Red Pro by 5 to 10%. And again, the newer NT001 model slightly outperforms the older, although not by the 15% margin the data sheets would suggest. And finally, 
we perform the non-sequential rewrite test. And this test overwrites 20% of all the files on the disk incrementally in each of the 10 gigabyte folders. The rewrites are not random, but they're non-sequential in a way that the drive cannot know which files will come next. So it's a good proxy for a random rewrite test, but done in a way that's consistently repeatable. And in this test, the WD Red Plus and the iMorph are pretty much inseparable from a performance standpoint, both producing around 105 megabytes per second, trending down to 65 and a half megabytes at the inner tracks. If anything here, the WD actually has a slight advantage. For the ProLine drives, however, we can separate the performance with the Ironwolf Pros again significantly better than the WD Red Pro drives. This test is more influenced by drive cache, so the results are far more variable, but there's no reason here to think that the cache management between the drives is a significant differentiator. The WD Pro drives produce a peak of around 130 megabytes per second on average, with the Ironwolf Pro NE001 about 140, and the NT001 closer to 150 megabytes per second average at the disk outer edge. So if I had to speculate, I would guess it's simply that the Seagate drives have a higher density and less read heads because other than rotational speed, aerial density is one of the key metrics that's gonna impact performance the most. The closer the data is on the tracks, the faster it can be read off the track. However, getting the physical layout of the four terabyte drive seems far harder from WD than Seagate due to the farm data availability on the Seagate disk. So it's hard to confirm if this is really the reason short of physically opening the drives. And now just to summarize all this data, let's look at the average disk performance in megabytes per second for each test for all the drives. So in this graph, we see each of the test types across the bottom with the five drives showing their average performance for each test. Firstly, we see that the WD Red Plus is the worst performing drive across the tests with the Ironwolf performing a little better in most areas. Both of these drives are 5400 RPM discs, so it would be expected to be a bit slower than the Pro drives. For the 7200 RPM Pro drives, again, the WD Pro is a little slower in nearly all the tests than both the Ironwolf Pro variants, with the more recent NT001 model consistently marginally better than the NE001. And in the large file tests, the margin isn't very large, and actually the Red Pro does better than the NE001 in the large read tests. When we look at the mixed file write, read, and rewrite tests, the pros from Seagate are faster by a larger margin. It isn't huge, but it's 10%, so it's still pretty significant. And then a quick look at the noise the drives make to help you decide which to choose if you're going to be using these in a location where the noise could irritate you. At idle and during normal operations, there are actually not large differences between these drives. The Red Plus is the quietest across all the tests with the Ironwolf very comparable to the Red Pro. The Ironwolf Pro drives are the noisiest. Though the difference isn't large, the Ironwolf Pro is notably louder during mixed file operations that require more head movement. If we look at peak noise, both the 5400 RPM drives suffer the least increase in noise when they're performing heavy work, and the Ironwolf Pros are notably louder. The WD Red Pro is the loudest, however, and my observation is that the head actuators on the WD seem to be noisier on the higher end drives. It's really noticeable actually on the Ultra Stars, and I'm going to be doing a Red Pro versus Ultra Star versus Ironwolf Pro versus Exos comparison soon, so don't forget to sub to catch that. During the mixed file test, the WD Red Pro produces 44.5 decibels peak versus just 41 decibels from the Ironwolf Pro. All noise measurements, by the way, were carried out at a range of about 5 centimeters and they were done inside a sound insulated enclosure. And then the power draw. Both the 5400 RPM consume units are very similar with the Ironwolf, slightly lower on power draw at 5 watts when idle, and are not rising above 6.6 .6 watts. The Red Plus is a little higher with a 5.4 watt idle and a 7.3 watt max draw during read operations. Now the WD Pro is juicier at 7.8 watts idle and maxing out at 10 watts during read operations, but the Ironwall Pros are 10% higher than this, consuming around 8.6 watts at idle and over 11 watts during large and mixed file reads. So overall, the Ironwall Pro drives are a little noisier, they're a little more energy hungry than the Red Pros, but the Red Pros are becoming the noisiest when they're doing busy work. Power tests were performed in a Sabrent USB enclosure which consumes around 1.2 watts and this 1.2 watts is included in all these numbers. And if we look at price, we see that the Red Plus Kim comes in at around $100 and a similar price in UK pounds. 
The Iron Wolf, however, is often 10 to 15% cheaper. And if you do want to go for a pro line, the WD Red Pro is around $140, but the Seagate Pro comes in at $10 or about £10 cheaper also. Okay, so I'm going to bring the conclusions next, but before I do, just a quick reminder, you know, hit those thumbs up for this video if you found it useful. And if you do want to give the channel a little support, it's actually the best way to signal the YouTube algorithm to share this content with others, and it's really a huge help. And if you do want to get more content suggested in your feed to get info on storage and as deep dives, then also please do consider a sub. Both these things are hugely appreciated and help the channel a lot, so thank you very much. So one thing I will say before I get to the technical conclusions is that the testing here is all data driven. I know that people have very personal feelings about both Seagate and WD. And this is often driven by negative personal experiences, right? These drives often hold our most valuable data. So when things go wrong, it's very personal. I'm not gonna tell you which drive or manufacturer you should buy. And this testing is simply to provide data to help you choose. There isn't a good source of public reliability data on the NAS drives from these vendors, but I do have a video where I cover a large public data set of around 400,000 drives, including large numbers from Western Digital, Seagate and Toshiba. And that really does shine a light on general reliability. I'm gonna link that below, uh, but reliability does also vary by model. So just consider that when you choose which to buy. From a purely performance perspective, the Seagate drives outperform in both the consumer grade 5400 RPM form factor and the ProLine 7200 RPM product lines. I realize that spinning hard disk performance isn't gonna match SSDs and you don't need to point this out in the comments, but when you have a collection of these in a RAID running in a NAS, you can easily saturate even a fast 10 gigabits per second interface. So if you're running 10 gigs at home or in your business or on your NAS, then you could benefit from the 7200 RPM drives. The reliability data I've analyzed from Backblaze previously for these videos implies that the consumer drives actually may not be more likely to fail than the pro drives in practice. And you can check those videos out if you're interested in seeing the data. But the pro drives do have a far longer warranty period of five years versus three on the Red Plus and the Iron Wolf. And I did previously use quite a few six terabyte Red drives myself, which came with three year warranty. And my experience was that most of them lasted six or seven years. And actually, I still have a few that are showing good. And they got eight years on the clock. So consumer drives, they can last just fine, um, well past their warranty time. And of course, the pro drives perform better and generally feel better made. But the wild card I would throw in there is that you should consider enterprise drives for your NAS, especially if you're going for large capacity. They can be a little noisier, but they're often actually far better value for money. Um, and I'm actually going to have that NAS Pro versus Enterprise comparison coming soon for 18 terabyte drives. So again, don't forget to sub to get that when it drops. Power and noise might push you towards the WD Red Plus if these things matter to you also. And then of course price, which you can't ignore. There can be some great deals from time to time. I'll link below so you can check Amazon pricing, but also check your favorite retailers. So what would I pick personally? Well, from this testing, it would be the Iron Wolf Pro. It provides excellent value for money and produces the best performance and comes with that warranty. For higher end drives, I currently favor the UltraStar for price and reliability, but I have plenty of Ironwolf Pros and I've had a good experience with them. But brand trust is important, so pick what you prefer. And my experience tells me that you'll likely be happy with any of these. If you do get a failure in a drive, it can just be the nature of statistics. Keep those receipts and always buy from trusted sellers where you know that the warranty will be good. Drives can and they do fail, so warranty coverage is important. And as always, I will see you in the next.